The list of YouTubers that have killed someone or been involved in someone's killing is shockingly long. But what about people that murdered someone and then started a YouTube career? Thule in Perspective is a YouTube channel created by a man named Vak Vikanes. And before he was a YouTuber, he spent years in prison for murder. Let's talk about it. Vak Vikanes has many names. He was born February 11, 1973 in Bergen, Norway, as Christian Vikanes. Today, he changed his name again to Louis Cachet. At the time he committed his crime, he went by Count Krishnak, which is how he got his name in the Norwegian press, the Count. Vikanes' childhood was interesting, to put it mildly. In an interview he gave to a magazine called Lords of Chaos, Vikernes claimed that when he was six, his parents and he and his brother moved to Baghdad in Iraq because his father was working for Saddam Hussein, who according to Vikernes tasked his father with creating some form of computer program. It is here in Iraq that Vak claimed he got his racist views. There was no room in the English school in Baghdad at the time, so he was sent to a regular elementary school. There Vikernes claimed he first became aware of quote-unquote racial matters, aka where he developed the thinking that he stood above other people because he was white. He explained it as followed. The school had corporate punishment, and one time I called a teacher a monkey. But no matter what, I never got hit, because I was white. His own mother collaborated his story about being in Iraq and that she never saw him being punished by the teachers. As she herself later said, this created big problems in his behavior. Vikernes had no good relationship with his father. He claimed in the same interview that his father was a hypocrite because he didn't want Varg to have a swastika flag in his room when he himself constantly complained about black people living in Bergen. In a 1995 interview, he stated that he had little to no contact with his father. When he was younger, he liked classical music. But that changed when his parents divorced and he turned 12. He got really into heavy metal music. Iron Maiden became his favorite band and would be the inspiration for his future music career. Besides music, he was also a huge fan of Tolkien. His later stage name, Krishnak, came from one of the orcs in the Two Towers book. He even named his first band Busum, which means darkness and is inscripted on the ring. As I said, he created his first band Busum in his late teens and they became part of the early Norwegian black metal scene. From 1992 to 1993, he recorded four albums with said band and he even turned it into a record label. In 1992, he joined another black metal band called Mayhem. Only a year after a member of that band, Dad, had committed suicide, Vikernes replaced the band's bassist, Necrobutcher, that had quit the band because of the band's guitarist's treatment of Dad's dad. Aronymous was the name of that member. On the 6th of June 1992, the 800-year-old Fantov Stave Church was burned to the ground by arson. Until January 1993, at least seven more churches fell victim to arson attacks. The perpetrator? Vak Vikernes. A jury found him guilty of at least four cases of arson, and while he to this day denies having anything to do with these attacks, he does like to give an explanation as of why the churches were burned down. According to him, it was nothing more than revenge. For the Christian desecration of Viking graves and temples. In early 1993, tensions started to arise and escalate pretty quickly between Vikernes and Aronimus, whose real name was Øystein Aset. What exactly happened the night of August 10th, 1993 is to this day not really known, because there are at least two versions of events. What we do know is that Vak stabbed Oystein to death. Vak himself claimed that it was in self-defense. He said Oystein had told a select group of people that he planned to kill Vark, and then lured him to his apartment with an unsigned contract. Oystein did own money to Vak, or better his record label. Vak claimed because he feared that Oystein had something planned, he actually brought a friend along for the meeting, Snorri Rush, who allegedly stood in the stairway of the apartment smoking when the crime happened. Vak claims he and Oystein for some reason got into a struggle when the later panicked and ran into the apartment to get a knife. Vak managed to get the knife off of him and then proceeded to stab Oystein 23 times. Snorri, on the other hand, told a different story. He claimed that Vark had planned to kill Oystein and had pressured him to come along. No matter what exactly happened in that apartment, we do know that Snorri and Vak both fled the scene, only stopping at a lake so Vak could dispose of his clothes. Nine days later, Vak got arrested in Bergen, and the police were shocked by what they found in his house. He had 150 kilograms of explosives and more than 3,000 rounds of ammunition. Multiple sources later claimed that Vak had planned and nearly executed an attack on his so-called Plitz house, which hosted a punk, anti-fascist squad. 
Vak himself denied these allegations. In 2009, he said he only had those things to protect Norway in case of an attack. His trial began on May 2, 1994. During it, it was claimed that Vak had a third complice who stayed at his house in Bergen, to make sure it looked like Vak was still there during the time of the murder. To make this alibi perfect, he even had his unnamed third accomplice use his credit card and rent movies. That, and the fact that Snorra said the crime was planned, was enough to sentence Vark to 21 years in prison. The longest possible sentence you can get in Norway. The sentence wasn't only for the murders though. It also included the arson on the churches and the possession of 150 kilograms of explosives. Snorra was sentenced to 8 years, as an accomplice. The day Vark got sentenced, two more churches were set on fire. The prosecutor later said it was probably a sign of support for Vark. After serving 15 of his 21 years and even once going on the run during his prison sentence, Vark was released on parole on May 22, 2009. After his release, he continued with his band Burzum. And he started a YouTube channel called Tulian Perspective. On it, he released the last song of Burzum called Back to the Shadows. To all accounts, he became very active on his channel for years. He also had a blog of the same name. This blog would get him into a lot of trouble though. On July the 16, 2013, he and his French wife were arrested on suspicion of planning a terroristic attack, but the police couldn't find any evidence for that. But they did charge Wark with inciting racial hatred against Jews and Muslims. These charges were brought up because of posts he made on his blog, which were heavily anti-Semitic. These posts miraculously disappeared after the charges were filed, and Var claimed he didn't post them. Nonetheless, he got sentenced in a French court to six months of probation, and he had to pay 8,000 euros. In June 2018, Vark made his last post on YouTube, claiming he had to move on from YouTube and Borzum. In 2019, YouTube actually removed the channel completely. By the time the channel had more than 250 thousand subscribers. This removal coincided with YouTube's statement that they would be more aggressive in removing videos alleging that a group is superior in order to justify discrimination, segregation or exclusion. In 2019, Rock published his last album with Burzum, and that pretty much ends his story in the public eye. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Let me know what you think down below. Was it self-defense or did Vark actually go to Oslo to kill his own bandmate? Leave me a like and I hope to see you again in my next video.